So I had a very interesting conversation with a, a customer, not a breeder that I did actually, they breed uh, German Shepherds. And uh, they'd sent me a paper after I had a conversation and the paper was about failures in pregnancies because of those matings being done at a different place than where the dog lives. And uh, I kind of poo-pooed this when I was talking to them, but then they then sent me a scientific paper and I'll give you the link to this. And it's pretty long and involved paper. I mean, it's a real study that's been done that supports the idea that maybe there's some truth to this, actually some significant truth to this. So, you know, it's, it's, so let me tell you how this goes. So the, the idea behind this is, is that um, dogs, female dogs, can abort litters because there's pressure that is going to make them lose their puppies through um, infanticide. So that would be either because a male kills the puppies or a, f or a dominant female kills the puppies. That's the idea behind this. And it's bared up with some scientific evidence. Now, I don't buy in all of this, and I'll talk a little bit about that here in a moment, but supposedly it can make a dramatic difference to success rates when you breed a dog, the dog is physically being moved from where it's normally would be with around other dogs to another location which might be across town or might be in another state to breed the dog and i mean this to me just sounds kind of crazy but the numbers apparently support this so what's the argument the argument is is that there's this thing called infanticide that because of that the dog then doesn't want to have a litter the, the idea behind this was that it, it it takes time and energy from a dog to produce a litter that then gets killed. That's the argument. And so to stop that from happening, the dog got bred and the dog somehow or other managed to abort the litter. Now, I've got some big problems with this in terms of how this could ever happen because this, this it can't be a learned thing. It has to be a genetic thing that's passed down from generations and generations through evolution. And so the problem to me with this is how would this ever come about? You know, if a dog, has puppies that never survive, then that genetic information to be able to do that's never passed on because the dogs aren't, don't exist. So I question the whole thing because of that. But supposedly the, 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 you know, this information says it really does happen. So I'm bringing this up because if you are having problems getting dogs bred and your dogs are being moved to other locations to do it, this might be of interest for you to look at this study. Um, so, what does this mean? I mean, first off, when I had the initial conversation with this person, I said, you know, to me, there's basically four things that produce failed litters. Number one being they're getting the timing wrong. And these things are all true, by the way. Number one, getting the timing wrong. Number two is, uh, which is the biggest one. Number two is um, the quality of the seam is not up to par. Uh, number three would be that uh, you're doing the wrong technique. You're not doing your AI properly. And number four is, is the dog physically can't get pregnant because it's got some problem like, hypo um, um, thyroid problems um, and that can be checked with things that nothing sim very simple as a blood test so but I thought it's an interesting concept so uh, I'm, there's the link for you to go look at the paper if you're having problems with failed litters where you're getting your dog bred by taking the dog somewhere else then this might be of interest look what we do is we ship semen, chilled semen, that goes all over the world. And you are doing the AI at your location. So this would not be the case. It doesn't apply to those situations. So um, I think this bolsters the ability for us to sell people our shipmate product because you don't have to take your dog and transfer the dog across the country. When I had this initial conversation with this customer, I said, well, look, you know, they were saying, well, what about stress and things like that? And then I said, well, I mean, you know, stress could have a factor in this, but, you know, if you think about animals that are out in the wild, like, you know, ante antelope on the plains of uh, Serengeti Plains, they're under extreme stress all the time. Their cortisol levels are gonna be going through the roof because all the time they're worried that they're gonna get eaten by, you know, a lion or, or a cheetah or something. So, and the, you know, and then, then they, we started talking about um, diet. And again, you know, if you look at, you know, what does diet have to do with all this? I think probably very little. And my argument for this would be, again, look at people um, who are in really tough situations. You know, they might be in Biafra where their diet is non-existent and the food and nourishment is terrible. And you can see that babies are born in really difficult situations and yet they still have babies. So, you know, it's a remarkable 
how mammals have adapted through evolution to be able to take the worst of diets and produce the products, produce the nutrients that they need to live. I mean, you and I, and I can tell you this, whether I'm eating you know, a really fabulous diet or I'm eating a really crappy diet, it's probably not gonna make a lot of difference to how James Chopping is, is the reality of it. I mean, obviously, if you eat a diet that's just, you know, totally laden with fats and nothing else, that's not good for you. But, you know, you'd be surprised, you know, what you can do if you're in a difficult situation. I mean, you take horses and put them where they've got no food at all and they'll eat the bark off trees and they'll survive. So, but anyway, interesting concept uh, about this, you know, inf infanticide being caused by dogs being bred at places other than where they're housed. So if you're having problems, I think it makes sense for you to kind of look at this literature. I'll get some more information and uh, maybe you'll post another video. Thanks for watching. Bye, buddy.